This video will help you to answer assessment criteria 3.1 and 3.2 of Supporting Good Practice in Performance and Reward Management, or 3PRM. 3.1 asks you to explain the factors that should be considered when managing good and poor performance, and 3.2 asks you to describe at least two items of data, including one external to the organisation. If you'd use your downloaded QR code reader, you can scan this for the CIPD fact sheet on performance appraisals. Assessment Criteria 3.1 asks you to explain the factors that should be considered when managing good performance. For good performers, there should be a recognition of the good level of performance, and in your organisation, this may be linked to reward. You should encourage the good performer to reflect, then use this for an honest discussion to identify areas of interest, areas that still challenge them and where they may still have development needs. Support and coaching should be offered by line managers to help employees continue improving their performance. And depending on their rating from the performance review, they may be placed on a succession plan. You should agree on new objectives for the good performance and ideally they should be a challenge or a stretch and possibly they should be in an area that interests them. And finally, you could provide support for the good performers such as opportunities for job shadows or secondments. The second part of 3.1 asks you to explain the factors that should be considered when managing poor performance. Poor performance is often quite difficult to deal with and as a result may be avoided. Your role in HR is to provide support and coaching to line managers to give them the skills to be able to deal with these issues. Line managers will need to provide support and coaching to their employees to enable them to understand possible options for improving their performance and to be able to take the necessary action. Poor performance can have a variety of causes and some of them might be outside the individual employee's control. So it is important to discuss any problems carefully with the employees so that practical solutions can be agreed. A development plan is used to support employees and this is a clear plan over a period of two to three months with progress meetings at least fortnightly. If performance doesn't improve, the first formal stage in many organisations is a note in writing setting out the performance problem, the improvement that's required and the timescale for achieving the improvement. A date will be set for a review and any support or training that the employer will provide to assist the employee. It will also detail further disciplinary action that may be taken if the underperformance persists. If you scan this code, it will take you to ACAS's report on how to manage performance, and that it includes a section on managing poor performance. Assessment Criteria 3.2 asks you to describe at least two items of data that you would use to either measure performance or use in a performance review and they should include one piece of data that's external to the organisation. Internal items of data include the objectives, so whether they were achieved and if not the reasons why this didn't happen. This could include key performance indicators or KPIs or service level agreements, also known as SLAs. Other items of internal data could be the competence, so whether the individuals are performing below, within or above the requirements of the role. The values and behaviours can also be assessed and information can be collected on these and this will assess how the objectives were achieved. Training records are another form of internal data, so this would include what training the individuals have received and which training and development activities they will benefit from in the future. And actions, a note of any actions that need to be carried out by the individual or the appraiser. External data could come as part of 360 degree feedback. 
360 degree feedback involves stakeholders who provide feedback on an individual's performance. In many organisations, the information is gathered using formally constructed questionnaires sent out to chosen stakeholders. The information is then collated and fed back to the individual. The stakeholders could include people internal within the organisation that the individual works with, but also some external partners, and this is where the external data will come from. The examples here are shown as suppliers who may feed back on the relationship they have with the individual, customers who may feed back in the form of complaint letters or compliment letters, or indeed mystery shoppers. Look out for the next video which will help you to answer 4.1 on the assignment 3PRM.